I'm going to teach you a 7 step framework to make so many friends that you can't even remember all of their names. And I know that this may seem like an exaggeration, but it's really not. So watch until the end to learn the method to try to remember most of your friends' names. I say try because it's still going to be very difficult, given the sheer amount of people you're going to be friends. I'm also going to reveal a secret method to make this framework fun and effortless. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The first step of this framework is mastering an overpowered technique called code approach, the art of talking to strangers. And since you've never been taught how to do it, let me teach you in easy, almost autistic steps what I've learned throughout tens of hours of YouTube videos and hundreds and hundreds of code approaches. First of all, spot somebody you want to approach. Second, ask yourself, do I want to talk to this guy? You're probably going to say yes. So start repeating in your mind the sentence. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Over and over again, like a maniac. What this does is it will take your mental focus away from your fears and self-limiting thoughts like what if he makes fun of me or I'm scared or just any thought at all. Trust me, this works like magic. If you want to try this for fun, pause this video and repeat in your mind the sentence non-stop and try to solve an easy math problem like 21 times 7 or something like that. Once you get close to the guy, say some random stuff. Some people say to improvise and not think of anything to say beforehand, but I personally prefer having a random go-to sentence in case I get stressed out and can't think of anything to say. Something like, hey, I'm Igor. I know this is a bit random, but to be honest, I got bored and decided to get to know somebody instead of doing jack shit. What's your name? Don't overcomplicate it and just act like a normal human being. The second step of the framework is understanding the mind behind code approach, because I guarantee you that you'll stay lonely for the rest of your life if you don't understand this. Imagine having two fishermen. The first one wakes up, readies his boat and sails into the ocean, only to sit there lying on his ship and waiting for the fish to automatically jump aboard. The second one, on the other hand, figures out where the fish hang out and then starts fishing. Who do you think will catch the most fish at the end of the day? Obviously the second one, so why would you ever have the mindset of the first fisherman with anything in life, let alone your social life? Instead of watching Little Dark Age edits on your bed and wondering why you're lonely, get out into the real world and start code approaching. I really want you to understand that code approach isn't just the fastest way to make friends, it's pretty much the only one. And if you want to make this easier or even fun, try this next step. I've done some crazy stuff that I wouldn't be able to normally do without this method like approaching 15 people in 20 minutes or talking to tens of girls at school in one day. I personally use two techniques to do this. The first one is to set out an intention on paper. Trust me, the times where I've pulled out my journal the day beforehand and written out to code approach something like 15 or 20 people, I've always hit that goal and felt great while doing it. To do this, just take out a piece of paper or your journal and write how many people you want to talk for the next day. Guaranteed you hit that goal or even surpass it. The second technique is a bit of a catch-22, but provided you already have a friend or at least an acquaintance, try to get him to point to a person or a group of people and make you code approach them. Get him to hype you up and make it almost a game and you effortlessly transform into a social butterfly. But moving on, what if you run out of things to say in the code approach? A lot of people think that you should just get comfortable with silence, but I personally disagree. This could be true if you are talking to a friend, but things like this tend to get very awkward with a stranger. It's true that the person you are approaching should do most of the talking, but sometimes you just don't know what to say, right? Well, the reason for that is because you're just not an interesting person. Period. But don't worry, once you stay on self-improvement for a while, start reading, learning, enjoying nature, going out into adventures and just stop rotting your brain with video games, Netflix and shorts, 
you won't have problems with this. Just ask the people questions, tell them a story, joke around and be a normal human. And I know that all of this seems easier said than done. And you're really scared of rejection. Trust me, I've been there. Rejection is scary. But you see, this should be the least of your worries now. Because from now on, your life could turn into hell if you make the wrong choices. I'm serious. Because you now know what you have to do. If before clicking this video, you felt lonely and didn't know what to do about it, you now know exactly what to do about it. And let me tell you, every single time you miss an opportunity to code approach and say to yourself, not now, or I'm not really feeling it, you're going to regret it. And I know that this may not seem like much, but when regret accumulates over the years, it hurts orders of magnitude more than rejection. To be honest, rejection doesn't even hurt sometimes. Every time I get rejected, it's a bit awkward for a few seconds, but when I walk away, I'm so glad that I did it. No man in the history of mankind has ever regretted doing a cold approach. But I do fucking regret every single missed opportunity to get to know somebody in my life. Regret hurts more than rejection. Drill this sentence inside of your skull for the rest of your life. Now that I've walked you through all the steps of my framework, pay attention to how you're feeling. Are you motivated, energized, thinking this will be a piece of cake, or are they visualizing how you're going to do it, or do you still feel a bit of friction? Are you kind of excited but scared? If so, I highly recommend you pay attention to the next part of the video. I know you're scared to mess something up and embarrass yourself in front of everybody, but just know that most of the time, people aren't even thinking about you, but rather about themselves. That guy on your right who you think is judging you is actually thinking about what he'll eat for dinner. And the guy on your left who you think is watching your every move is actually thinking about what everybody else is thinking about him. And what if you mess up big time? Just know that people are going to forget your face in a matter of hours. Don't believe me? Think about the faces of three strangers you met two days ago. I know you can't. Nobody can. Trust me, I've seen all kinds of stuff, from drug addicts causing a tantrum in a bus, to a boyfriend screaming aggressively at his girl in public, and yet, no matter how much I try, I can't. Anyways, as promised, here's a secret method to try to remember all of the names of the people you could approach. After asking for a person's name, think about their most distinctive features. Maybe you approached a guy named Robin that has a funny curly haircut. What you're going to do now is you're going to visualize a memorable scene with these two things. Maybe you visualize thousands of little Robin birds emerge from his hair and fly away in an instant. The more wacky the scene, the more chance you've got of remembering the person. I know that this may seem goofy, but this kind of visual thinking is used by all kinds of memory champions. Like the guy who memorized 70,000 digits of pi in just 17 hours. So you may want to give this a try. Anyways, you've officially graduated from this video. Apply what you learn here in real life and take care.